Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a very warm welcome to this presentation. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank CFA Society for uh, giving me an honor here to present. Uh, this, like, like, like the introdu uh, introduction was, that uh, there cannot be a better time to talk about momentum than now. Uh, even uh, even monsoon is momentum in, is in momentum in Delhi. Uh, a brief about me. My name is Manish Thavan. Uh, uh, I'm at Mystic Wealth. We do factor research in uh, value and momentum. We started in the year 2011. Back then, we were only doing value investing. And within value investing, a subsect called uh, emergers and spin-offs. In the year 2014, we got interested in the research that was coming out of uh, from US uh, around the momentum factor. We started experimenting with it, uh, deployed our own money. By the year 2017, we had a structured product in place. And now, since 2017 to now, we have a documented uh, track record of generating alpha out of momentum. So back when we started, uh, momentum was not an in thing. It was uh, hardly anybody was even aware of it, leave alone practice it. I mean, sure, some mutual funds were doing momentum investing, but they were not calling it that. They were doing it in the garb of growth or whatever. But it was still a taboo word. Uh, uh, they were not out of the closet yet. Uh, things have changed considerably in the last uh, five, six years. Now, though, we have uh, mutual funds pursuing momentum, both active and passive. And so things have changed. Uh, so I just wanted to understand how much the things have changed. And I wanted to ask you, how many of you here in the audience are aware what momentum investing is? So I think things haven't changed much. <laughs> Uh, I see less than 10% of people uh, raising hand. Let me ask another question, and I'm sure this will be less than 10%. How many people actually practice momentum investing in their portfolio? Surprisingly, we have more names, so you don't know about momentum when you're practicing it. <laughs> uh, so back when I started, uh, this was like a totally new thing. And uh, this is a true story. Uh, my uncle, my, my mom's mama ji, uh, sorry, my mom's brother, my mama ji, asked me this question. Uh, Bede, I know you that, that you were in stock market, but what exactly is it that you do? So when I told him I do uh, momentum investing, uh, the answer that he gave me was actually a counter question. So he said, do you do investing or do you do momentum? I mean, it's almost the underlying assumption that, the, uh, that my mama had was that this is an oxymoron. You can either do chase momentum or you can do investing because investing to value you the year. So from that to now, uh, things have uh, moved considerably. Now, I'll come back to that oxymoron fact and why that is the case, but uh, let me bring home the point by this, uh, you know who, who this guy is. Everybody knows it must be part of your curriculum as well. Eugene Farmer is father of efficient market hypothesis. And I have huge respect for this guy, and I'll tell you why. Uh, you know, I was reading this uh, uh, book, uh, I forgot the name, but the underlying message was that if you want to understand before investing in a company, uh, whether your company has some competitive advantage, or moat as they call it, the best way to figure that out is to hear the competitor. You should be hearing what the competitor has to say about, about the company you are interested in investing in. And if the competitor has some good words to say, that basically means uh, this company is some, on to something. Now, similar is the case with momentum. This guy, Eugene Farmer, basically spent his entire lifetime propagating a theory called efficient market hypothesis. What this theory essentially says is that you cannot beat the market. Uh, market is supreme. It factors in everything that needs to be factored in. The best thing you can do is do index investing, period. Uh, the people who are beating the market are outlier uh, stroke of chance and nothing more. Now, this theory actually became a hit, such a hit that uh, 
Eugene actually won the Nobel Prize in economics. In fact, uh, Pharma and French uh, research paper is probably one of the most cited paper uh, if you go to SSRN. All the further research, factor research, uh, always reference back to these guys. Uh, and so the commitment and consistency bias must be huge because it's like, it's like brand becoming the product. It's almost like a Colgate and toothpaste. So Eugene Pharma is almost equal to efficient market hypothesis. When you have that kind of commitment associated, your lifetime work is associated with your theory, and you come, up, uh, come across this confirming evidence, what do you do? Usually, when such a thing happens, commitment and consistency bias so strong that an average Joe like you and me would discard that disconfirming dis evidence. But credit where it's due, Eugene Pharma had a scientific outlook towards life and data, and so he acknowledged the disconfirming evidence. This evidence basically came from his student uh, himself. And when this evidence came, Eugene Pharma acknowledged rather reluctantly, and he said momentum is probably the biggest embarrassment to his theory. Now, uh, I'm not going to spoon feed you, so I'm attaching the link here. It'll be nice if you go through, uh, in your free time, uh, the presentation. Uh, this interview where Eugene Farmer is talking about this, it's pretty interesting stuff. He's reluctant. In fact, he says, uh, you know, I really wish before I die that this anomaly goes away. <laughs> but uh, as we speak, the facts are that an anomaly is staring uh, me in my face, the anomaly is there. Uh, and it's in fact the biggest uh, embarrassment out there. Now remember guys, anomaly in the academic world translates to alpha in the practitioner's world. So when somebody who spent his entire lifetime propagating efficient market hypothesis discards the commitment and consistency bias, and pays heed to disconfirming evidence and says momentum is the premier anomaly, and I'm quoting him here, uh, then as practitioners, we should pay very close attention. This is where the alpha is. But the point is, yet if you chase value, it's called investing. And if you chase momentum, it's called speculation. I mean, it's pretty ironical. The strange thing is Eugene Pharma uh, talked about value as well. He said that even value is, uh, an, is an anomaly, but a lesser anomaly, uh, whereas momentum is like the premium anomaly and it's the biggest embarrassment. And yet, the layman introduction, or the, if you ask anybody uh, out in the public, they would call chasing value as investing, whereas chasing uh, momentum as speculation. I'll get down to why is that, but uh, my point is, uh, these are semantics. And as my message is that as a practitioner, as an investor, our job in the market is to make money. Uh, not join any cult, uh, not be part of any group, uh, because these are all semantics. Kya farak padta hai if I'm a value investor or a momentum investor? It should reflect in your PNN. Because end of the day, we are here to make money. Now, I thought about it, that uh, why would this be the case that people relate to value more than uh, momentum? And I had this conversation with my good friend, Puneet Khurana, who happens to be a value investor, who doesn't usually like being called value investor, but anyways, for the sake of example. Uh, you know, let me give you an example. Let's just say, at a given point of time, we go long a particular stock. Let's say data patterns. Now, since I've taken the name of the stock, let me get disclaimers out of the way. This is just an academic exercise. Uh, nothing that I say today should be construed as an investment advice. So let's take an example, uh, data patterns. And let's, for the sake of example, again, is assume that uh, our purchase price is same. Both me and Puneet bought it. Puneet bought it on his value parameters. I bought it on my momentum parameters. The, Strangely enough, just for the hypothetical example, even our exits were same, so the profit that we earned from that particular stock is same. Now, if somebody asks me, uh, can you write a thesis as to 
what was your hypothesis why you bought data patterns and uh, when you sold it why you sold it what will i do as a momentum investor i'll have one line answer for the buy you know i ranked all the stocks it came in top 30 i bought it i held on to it checked every month if it's still ranking up if the answer came yes i kept on holding it and then one month let's say nine months later i did that ranking and it fell below 50 that was the reason in, you know for me to sell it that's it these two lines explain my entire hypothesis why it became a two bagger for me whereas if you ask the same question to a value investor he will write first five pages on the management quality itself he will basically put you into tears how ethical the management is then another two pages on the earning forecast that he foresees and how everything is aligning and the earnings will be in place. Then another two pages probably on the sector tailwinds itself, how India will, uh, India and defense story will pan out and why data patterns will uh, be the beneficiary of that. Now compare those 10 pages, the story versus my two lines, the buy based on ROC, who do you think people will give money to? And so my conclusion is that the reason why momentum investing is not considered as an investing thing and value is considered investing is because of the ability to build narrative around the story. And story, ladies and gentlemen, sells. Books and books have been written on this subject that human beings think in terms of stories and not numbers. On the benefit of those who are like completely obvious, if you can just define the moment of investing in a moolah. I'll definitely come to that. Yeah, yeah. I was just studying the base ke momentum ko izzat mil gyo neri. So now, this is the factor dance since 2017. Uh, this has all the factors, uh, NSC uh, factors, Nifty values, small cap 250, quality 30, Nifty 200. Uh, so Nifty 200 and small cap would be basically market, not the factors and then Nifty, Momo 30, and Alpha 50. Now for a second, uh, let's ignore the top one, the Alpha 50. And the reason why I say that is that because there happens to be a tracking error between the actual product and the index. So for the sake of this example, we are willing to ignore, I'm willing to concede that maybe that will not be, uh, the retail would not be able to replicate that. Although even that is not that big a deal, the tracking error is not that huge. Uh, but for the sake of, sake of example, let's remove that. Even this Momo 30 and Nifty, you see an air time gap between that. There is there's actual air between these two. We live in a world, ladies and gentlemen, where if an active mutual fund manager beats Nifty by a few basis points, he will start doing a victory lap. I'm not exaggerating, he will. You will hear him in various uh, uh, news channels. And in here we see, without doing anything, this momentum fund has beaten daylights out of Nifty. This gap is not small, this is pretty huge. And this is just 2017 to till date. And so the writing is on the wall that in the factor war, momentum wins hands down. Now, let's come back to the main topic. What is momentum investing? Heck yeah, cheese. It is a tendency of continued outperformance of assets which have outperformed in the past. What goes up continues to go up. Bhav Bhagwan Che, ek hi line mein, jo upar ja raha hai, upar jata rahega. That in a nutshell is what momentum is. Now, you might say, ke, uh, what are you talking about? The mean reversion is a fact of life and mean reversion happens all the time. We see that. And that is true. But the cycles are different, guys. In a typical business cycle, mean reversion takes place around time period of three years. Whereas all the momentum research that has happened takes into account a factor of last 12 months. In the last 12 months, we are ranking stocks which have done well and we are going long them. The mean reversion will kick in, no doubt about it, but it will kick in a lot later. In that meantime, in the gap, we will basically pocket that alpha. That, in a nutshell, is what momentum investing is. Now, here's a, a hint for you guys as well if you value investors. Since mean reversion happens 
in a three year cycle, don't go out there catching the falling knives. Let the knife fall properly and lose its momentum on the downside. Let it consolidate. In that three year window, when all the supply will be exhausted or the demand will be exhausted, that's when you do your value investing. So to sum it up, momentum investing is buying what's going up because Newton law will apply, it will continue to go up unless until a bigger force stops it. And mean reversion does kick in, it's a fact of life, but the cycles are different. That cycle happens in three years windows. Now, essentially how academic research has panned out, momentum investing is divided into two parts. One is time series momentum and another is cross-sectional, rotational, or relative momentum. Uh, I'll explain that with an example. Uh, absolute momentum versus relative momentum. These are the two types of momentum. Absolute momentum, kya hota hai? when I am comparing an asset class with itself. No other factor, just asset class ko usi ki performance se compare kar rahe hai. That is time series momentum. Uh, like for example, if I'm comparing Jitendra's uh, CFA first year score with his second year score, that is time series momentum. Now, relative is the exact opposite of that. Now you're comparing two different asset classes. For example, same example, if I'm comparing Jitendra's uh, final year score with, let's say, somebody else's final year score, and I'm comparing with who did better, now I'm doing what is called as relative or cross-sectional momentum. It's as simple as that. Now, within this, uh, there are various nuances. So this guy, Mabain Faber, came up with a very simple concept of tactical asset, asset allocation, where, and it will not get any simpler than this guy's. He basically said, if a particular stock is above its 10 month moving average, I'm long that stock. If it goes below its 10 month moving average, I'm out. There's, there's not even a second line of the code. That's just, that's just it. The buy and sell in one line, 10 month moving average ke upar hai I'm long, uske niche hai I'm out. You will not believe doing just that beats daylights out of buy and hold. Now we did a podcast with Vivian Faber. Uh, if you haven't uh, gone through it, I will highly recommend it. Uh, the name of the podcast is Stoic Talks. Uh, in season one, we had a detailed discussion with this guy where he explained the beauty of such a simple strategy. Uh, it's a fascinating conversation. You will love it. Then comes timing a mutual fund based on trailing stops or benchmark returns. Now, it's outside the scope of this presentation for me to detail that. So again, I will uh, urge you to do your own research. Uh, Google Mystic Wealth Medium and you'll come across this fascinating study that we did. We did this study on DSP microcap, and we went through its entire journey, uh, how it captured the microcap bull run, and how it basically got thrashed in the 2008 crisis, and then again uh, uh, gathered uh, the momentum and started performing well again. What we essentially did was that we ran a monthly system asking a simple question, again, uh, absolute time series one, saying every month, let's say on your lucky date, you ask whether DSP microcap uh, was generating 8% return year to date or not. If the answer is yes, answer is yes, I'm staying put. If the answer is no, I'm, I'm getting the hell out. That's it, every month I'm doing this. You'll be surprised and go through that blog uh, the difference in returns of buy and holding that uh, uh, mutual fund versus following this simple rule. Of course, the taxation angle would have to be taken care of, but right now we're just proving the efficacy of a trend-following system. You cut the drawdown by half while still maintaining the returns. Now, the third thing within the absolute momentum is stock port portfolio based on ranking. Now, this, uh, this is where people like Kleinau and Wesley Gray come in. Uh, Wesley has written a book on the subject as well, as, uh, as well qualitative, uh, sorry, quantitative momentum. We also interviewed Wesley Gray in our podcast. 
and you will do well to listen to that. It's an amazing, uh, fascinating conversation where he is detailed as to how he is quantifying momentum and how he's creating his ETF. Uh, so this is the third way. This is what we at Mystic Wealth do as well. We, uh, we do momentum investing on stocks. On the relative side, uh, there is a rotation between asset classes. Now, ideally, you want to do this rotation on uncorrelated assets. Uh, again, Google, this name, uh, this friend of mine, Ankit Garg, has done a very detailed webinar on his strategy uh, between Nifty and USD INR. And it's a beautiful study that he has done. And of course, he's doing it in, on futures, so that much more alpha and leverage. Uh, how the uncorrelated assets, again, he's doing uh, relative momentum, asking, let's say, pichle ikkis din mein, who's faster, uh, Nifty or USD INR? Uh, and he's, of course, doing a weighted average of that because the denominator is not same. But after doing that, he's just going long the stock, which is showing momentum. And you'll be surprised how amazing alpha generation activity that is. Then we come to, uh, in the second variety, the relative, uh, is Gary Antonacci's Dual Momentum. Gary has written a book on, by the same name. It's called Dual Momentum. Ye kya kar hai? He's doing, uh, he's clubbing both of them. Uh, he's doing relative and absolute both. Now, we interviewed Gary Antonacci as well. And in that podcast, he has detailed his strategy to the T. Uh, and you would love that conversation too. Uh, I'm in this presentation, I'm going to delve deeper into what dual momentum is. So step one, uh, decide your universe. Uh, you basically figure out that you asset allocation in uh, which So Gary Antonacci in his book basically did it with three asset classes which was uh, US equity, uh, emerging market equity, and bonds. Uh, we replicated the whole thing in the Indian markets as well. Again, go to my blog, Mystic Wealth Medium, just Google it. You'll come across uh, the Indian version of this, how we backtested that. The second uh, step in the process is you rank these asset classes on their last 12-month ROC. Basically, three of them are standing with each other and they are saying, who is the best one? That's it. Uh, so you, let's say today is 29th July, 2023. Aapne, uh, data nikala 29th July, 2022 ka. Tab se return calculate kiya. You figure out in teenu mein se sab se tez kaun bhaga. Second question that you'll ask, see if that asset has given more than your benchmark, say 8% year to date. If the answer to both is yes, you simply buy that asset. We did this with Nifty, Gold, and uh, Motilal Oswal 100, which is NASDAQ 100. And then you repeat this exercise every month. Choose your date, let's say your date of birth. Us date pe aap koi exercise dobar karni hai. Ab in teen ghodo mein se sab se tez kaun hai. Agar ghoda change hua hai, then we are putting all money, all our money shifting it to the new horse now. If not, then we're staying with that horse. And if that condition is not met, if the horse that is selected is not uh, doing benchmark 8%, then we are moving to cash. Doing something as simple as that, again, beats daylights out of buy and hold. And the drawdown gets reduced by half, exact half, little more than half, actually. Now, I shared with you guys uh, this ranking, uh, this uh, factor dance thing, right? Wait a second. Where it is? This. Now, this is a Momo 30 thing, and that is Alpha 50. The code of which is given on NSE website itself. Uh, Momo 30 basically does what is called as Z-score calculation, and Alpha 50 does what is called as Jensen score calculation. Uh, other, but if I tell you that the factor dance which already beat the Nifty, you can beat it too. You can beat it too. DIY, do-it-yourself investors, can do even better than the momentum index. And you know why I say that with such authority? Is because all the research that has panned out in the momentum world has done a rebalance on a monthly basis, or at worst, quarterly basis. Whereas 
Momentum 30 index is rebalancing every six months. Just by adding this virtue to your uh, portfolio, you will beat daylight sort of momentum fund as well. Because think about it, momentum index, uh, momentum fund should not be waiting for six months for rebalance. Imagine you have uh, Adani in your portfolio. By six months, it will go up to zero. You get what I'm saying? So uh, just by rebalancing it, rebalancing it once a month, you can beat the daylights out of the momentum index as well. Now, let's create a strategy here. Uh, yeah, please. Yes, so every month you'll ask the same set of question again. Uh, who's the fastest of them all? Uh, this question gets answered in, in this slide. Uh, let's create a strategy. The strategy, the first thing that you would do is you decide your universe. Now, if you are a retail investor with, let's say, 2 to 10 lakh rupees to invest, or even, let's say, 20, 30 lakhs to invest, you don't really have to worry about the universe. Uh, the entire world is your playground. You can uh, pretty much invest anywhere, uh, as long as it's not a BSC stock, which is circuit to circuit. So we ran top NSE 750 stocks on their 12-month ROC. Again, same thing. Today is 29th of July, 2023. Uh, we take data from off. 29 July 2022, uh, and we are calculating the performance, so the return that each and every stock has generated. And one month trade, one month trading, then one year trading rate. It's not a trailing, it's an exact figure that you'll get. Yeah. Like for example, let's say Adani Gas ne is sal 200% move kiya, uh, ONGC ne 20% move kiya, right? That kind of thing that you'll get. Now you're just selecting top 30 and buying them equivalent. No rocket science, we're not uh, going to get into details. We're simple to work with the top 30 names, we are equivalent buying them. We have put equal money in all Now we are running this screener next month. Every month, yeah, please. Look, you saw ROC, return of capital investment, or it's the, the, the return that they have written. Yeah, yeah, this is value glass. Nahi hai, yaar. Uh, this is ROC is rate of change. Matlab kitni is the return di. Hai na? Now we run the screener next month, remove any that has fallen below 50, replace it with new entrance. On that fixed date that you have decided, let's say 11th is my birthday, so har 11 tarikh ko, I'm going to run this screener and see, jo already top 30 mein, abhi bhi top 30 mein, they stay put. Agar koi top 50 se bhi niche chala gaya hai, I'm removing that. And uski jaga jo naya top 30 bhi hai, I'm putting that. Again, I will have at any given point 30 stocks only. Now, you'll be surprised. Uh, now, because of SEBI, I'm not supposed to disclose the backtest results or whatever, but this beats daylights out of your Momo index. Now, you guys must be wondering why this alpha leak? Uh, I mean, contrary to popular belief, I am not that generous a person. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, this, this is a very interesting question. So you can actually better this. Thanks for reminding. Uh, you can do a lot of tweaks and better this. I'll give you some examples of how to better it. Let's say you can penalize stocks which are volatile. So you can do sharp ratio analysis. Uh, you can do ranking based on sharp, which is I want high momentum but low volatility stocks. You can create filter of circuits. I don't want stocks which are which have hit let's say five circuits uh, in the past uh, one month or whatever. Uh, you can do filter based on uh, volume. Uh, crore se kam ki volume wale ko touch nahi karunga. You can do filtering based on and these are all value adds by the way. This will improve your alpha. Uh, you can add filter like stock should be above its moving average 150, 200, whatever. Then you can do value add. The stock should not be away from its all time high by more than 25 to 30%. All these value adds will ensure that you are in the cream de la cream of the stocks which are actually showing, uh, which are in their growth phase and which are exploding. 
Yeah. If I, uh, is it a good thing that a stock is volatile when we are momentum investing? Very interesting question. Lesh, can you repeat the question about the bullet New York? Okay, so the question was that uh, isn't it better uh, for a momentum portfolio to have volatile stocks? Uh, and the answer is no. Uh, the opposite is true. You want stocks which are moving in their direction idly in a 45 degree curve so that there is less volatility, you will not get chopped out. Whereas if you see something like this, while the direction is up, it will chop you out. We can take this offline. This is sharp uh, analysis. Okay, this is a very good question. There's this friend of mine, Viraj, who has come up with this website, momoindiascreener.com. I'll share the link. Uh, uh, he is basically eased it out for all the DIY investors out there. Now, all the parameters that I mentioned are just selectable filters, uh, distance from all-time high, distance from 52-week high, uh, uh, ROC based on 12 months, or maybe ROC based on weighted average of 9 months, 6 months, 12 months, or, uh, uh, or filtering based on sharp, or filtering based on 6 months, 3 months, 9 months, or a combo thereof. You can do all permutations and combinations. Just click a button, it will give you the output. So, so we can change the hyperparameters, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, why this alpha leak? Ye aap logo ko bata ke mujhe kya mil I mean, I am not that generous a person. If I'm sitting on, let's say, a 50% CAGR uh, return uh, strategy with 5% drawdown, Trust me, you would not find me standing here uh, divulging that information so that the edge goes away. Uh, the thing is, there is no alpha leak in momentum investing. I have told you in a slide what to do, but no one will do it. It's simple, but it's not easy. Uh, leave alone you guys, leave alone DIY, leave alone retail, the actual practitioners who've been doing it for years find it tough. At one point of time, Adani Gas uh, had become so huge in our portfolio, uh, we held on uh, because of our conviction on the strategy or whatever. But at one point, the situation was such that every day, some of the other bad news was coming. Uh, everybody was telling us why we should get out uh, of the stock. It's a company fraud. Look at the numbers. Look at the balance sheet, blah, blah, blah. But the stock kept on going up. It became double, it became three times, four times. At what point will, will you give in? And so, point is, it's simple but not easy. For us, it ended up becoming a five-bagger before we got an exit. But, ye kehna asaan hai, karna bahut mushkil hai. Why can you get into the exit? Uh, system. The system gave the exit. Uh, when, when the worst rank held, uh, like I shared in the previous key screen, of got violated. That's when we exited. You were you were rebalanced. Then we were at least then a lot of want you that rebalancing. We were need to wait for you when they kind of exiting it every month or two months or whatever. No, okay, uh, good, very good question. So we are uh, not changing the size if it's still in. If the stock is still holding its ranks, we are not equivating it. It will, it, it will be allowed to grow as big as it wants. But uh, one variation of momentum investing is, I know some of my colleagues do that, they trim the position down to reduce the overall risk of the portfolio. To each his own, uh, even that works. It's still making days of Madani, uh, in the start, uh, sorry, going down with us. Uh, we did, but uh, of course the last leg, uh, you miss it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're referring to the crash that happened. We were out long before that. Uh, as a momentum investor, remember, you are willing to let go of the last leg. But that's okay. That's part of the game. The pain is real. Now, this strategy is a gestation period, guys. Uh, 2018 to 19, uh, Mystic Wealth Momentum went through a drawdown of around 28%, which was still lower than uh, the market, 
but still 28% is lot more than lot pe lot of people can handle so uh, you get into the self doubt mode you look look into your own code whether whether the strategy is stop working or not my point is the gestation period is long for you to enjoy a 2021 bull run you have to go through the 2018 19 kind of pain similarly to enjoy the right now the bull run that we are enjoying in 2023 you have to go through the 2022 pain and if you cannot take that pain you don't earn the right to enjoy that gain either so the gestation period is long and that is the reason there is no alpha lee ye dagar asaan nahi hai for mystic was like that crowd out was a very fully invested or you a plan for your cash Yes, yeah, so we have a cash call mechanism at Mystic Wealth. Uh, like for example, the Corona crash, we were fully proof. Uh, uh, we had a drawdown of around nine percent. But this one, the 2018 to 19 one, remember it's a slow churn down, and so your your system will not give you a cash call. So you'll have to go through that sideways pain. Well, the distribution period is longer than. Pretty much same, yeah, yeah. So the my conclusion of this slide is that the edge is behavioral in nature, and so it's here to stay. I mean, I can tell you the strategy uh, without blinking an eye. Everybody can go home today and implement it, but the point is the edge is behavioral in nature. Comes the bear market, the the best of us will panic. You said the edge is behavioral, right? But a start and end has to be met by an order to flow. You do like a full grid. So, uh, and this is we do not quite want it to be that it is by it. It really is getting you by it, right? If you use a lot better volume, you get cash out, or you know, who has none by so it's a so. I feel you know supposed to be at by it. You should, you know, you should not take that with the start. It is that like you know just to. Right. So I mean, can you explain the same thing a bit? Okay. Let's just say I have a option strategy, uh, and there are a lot of option strategies out there, जो चालीस टका कमारी होंगी साल का, with almost non-existent drawdowns, five six percent drawdown. Now, if I share that strategy here, and everybody starts implementing that, the edge will go away. Right. that is not the case here because the edge is behavioral in nature <clears throat> only those will make money who will show the gumption and courage to of staying put throughout pulling the trigger even in middle of the pain because iska drawdown 5% nahi hai bhai iska drawdown 28% hai and 28% pe uh, it will start testing your character whether you start doubting whether whether what i'm doing is correct or not now this is a pretty interesting uh, study done by my friend anish teli of quit capital uh, this is in public domain uh, i think praveen palande of et prime published this uh, what essentially this study is saying is that the market can be divided into two cycles expansion and contractions and how they have defined it uh, you can catch hold of anish as well this is not my study but what he essentially did was a composite index they calculated the composite index and whenever the composite index is x they will call it the expansion and whenever it's less than x it, they will call it the contraction uh, that's not important but the important point is the conclusion of the study was that depending on various cycles of the market different factors do well so there is a dance happening within the factors as well har samay ek factor hero nahi ban ke rehta like for example i showed you that chart where momentum as a factor has done the best but iska matlab ye nahi hai momentum has done best all the time it has done well overall it's the best strap factor but within that Uh, there is a factor dance happening we did this study uh, where uh, we did this mirror mirror on the wall who's the which is the best factor of them all and if you can see that uh, every year there is a new new player who's uh, carrying the baton who's taking the leadership stealing the le leadership 
एंड सो अगर आप खाली मोमेंटम में ही इन्वेस्टेड हो और दूसरे फैक्टर में नहीं हो देन यू मिसिंग द पॉइंट सो वाइल मोमेंटम इज अ ग्रेट फैक्टर ओवरऑल देर बीन सो मैनी ईयर्स वेयर इट हैज बीन लैगिंग एंड सम अदर फैक्टर हैज टेकन द लीडरशिप नॉट टेक दिस फॉर एग्जाम्पल Uh, 2018, 19, 20, quality did phenomenally well, and then 2021, 22, quality basically did horribly. See, now look at it in the context of uh, uh, Sora Mukherjee. See, uh, he received a lot of flak, right? Because his uh, his funds not performing. But look at it from the point of view of the factor dance, and you will get the picture clearly. जब उसका फैक्टर ही अच्छा नहीं कर रहा तो उसका फंड कैसे अच्छा करेगा एंड सो द फैक्टर डांस इज कॉन्स्टेंटली हैपनिंग एंड व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू एलो टू इज द फैक्ट दैट एज एज अ टॉपिक ऑफ दिस प्रेजेंटेशन एसेट एलोकेशन एंड बेसिकली फैक्टर एलोकेशन चेंजेस द गेम फॉर यू नाउ वी नीड टू डायल इन द रिस्क यू नो आई I'm a fan of Ed Sekota, and I keep uh, going to his FAQ website. It's an amazing web website where people ask him questions, and he answers back uh, in metaphors, in pictures, and it's pretty fascinating stuff. So somebody actually asked him uh, that uh, although I know I'm right and my system is correct, the buy signal has come, but I'm not able to sleep. And he basically gives an answer with a, a sleeping girl's photograph, and he says. find your sleeping limit if you're not able to sleep is a factor of your exposure your exposure is more than your uh, your capacity or your threshold of pain you simply tone it down as simple as that and we'll we'll learn here in this presentation how to tone it down so i want you to watch this 4 minute video of ray dalio i don't know if uh, he's been able to put the emphasis on or not this actually is the holy grail uh, i have spent what 12 years in the industry now and i can vouch for it and say that uh, put my neck out and say this ladies and gentlemen is the holy grail finding uncorrelated strategies has some uh, has got a magical aspect to it while it maintains your return it reduces the drawdown it's a game changer I'll show you with examples how this works. We did this podcast with Tom Basso. It's a recent podcast, and he emphasized the same point. You know, during the conversation, uh, he was sharing his shorting technique, how he's hedging his long portfolio by shorting uh, SPY, uh, which is uh, Standard Poor 500. Uh, SP 500 ko short kar raha hai down chain pe ya whatever his strategy is, and I counter questioned him. I asked him. I have back tested this thing in India and it doesn't work. I mean it works in 2008 and it works in 2020 kind of crazy crashes but it usually doesn't work it loses money. He laughed and he said that's okay. He was like what? And this is the power of correlation. He says it's okay. The strategy's job is not to earn money stand alone. the strategy's job is to earn money when my long only portfolio is not making money hence smoothing the equity curve for me to stay in put that is just a holy grail ladies and gentlemen uh, you keep on finding strategies which are falling at different times in the overall scheme of things your equity curve will start getting smooth now the question came agar hame value or momentum ko मिक्स करना है तो व्हाट डू वी डू डू वी मिक्स देम और डू वी इंटीग्रेट देम एंड नाउ दिस इज अ फैसिनेटिंग डिबेट एंड इट्स स्टिल अनफोल्डिंग इन द इन द यूएस एट लीस्ट ए क्यू आर केम अप विद द एस एस आर आर इन रिसर्च पेपर क्लेमिंग इंटीग्रेशन इज बेटर देन मिक्सिंग सो वट दे एसेंशली सेंग लेट मी एक्सप्लेन इंटीग्रेशन तो वो बोल रहे हैं कि इट्स मच बेटर इफ यू rank stocks on value first create uh, find your universe out of value and now look for momentum within them that is called integration approach they are saying uh, don't mix you should integrate it whereas cory hoffman of flirting with models
came up with a rebuttal paper claiming it is much better to mix rather than integrate. What is the definition of mix means? He says run both the portfolios parallelly. Momentum portfolio chalao, value portfolio chalao separately, usko equivate kar do, aadha paisa isme dalo, aadha isme pa dalo, your overall equity curve will be better. Now this is a, uh, this is an ongoing debate which one is better and I'll tell you which one we chose. Uh, do you know who this guy is? He ganja gone hai. Yeah, yeah, man, you. <laughs> yes, so this guy is Wesley Gray. Uh, he's principal officer of Alpha Architect. We've done the podcast with him as well, like I shared. Uh, we had this conversation. I asked him this question, precisely this question, ke momentum or value ko integrate karna hai, mix karna hai. And he gave me the answer of yin and yang. Uh, it's a fascinating conversation. Listen to that as well. He said, Momentum and value in his experience, and he runs both the ETFs, value ETF and momentum ETF. He says in his experience are yin and yang. When the yin is yanging, yang basically goes dormant. And when the yang is yanging, yin basically goes obsolete. So what it does is that they are uh, complementing each other and the overall equity curve becomes very smooth. Now, so this is the reason I believe in mixing and not uh, integrating. The second reason and the more practical reason is integrating is outside my bandwidth. It's a very tough thing to code. Uh, value, first of all, you quantifying value is a difficult ask in itself because no two people uh, derive the same meaning when I say value. Let's just say for the example, I'm able to quantify. So my friend Puneet Khurana is, is doing some work on this. Uh, he did uh, the integrating bit. I don't know how much he succeeded, but I, for bandwidth choke issues, decided not to pursue it, and I decided that the mixing thing works out better. Because in my back test, I realized, why go there? Why go in, in, uh, in the integration world where the mixing world is giving such, such awesome returns? Another reason why I personally feel why integration is a world of discretion and Mixing is basically a world of uh, mechanical, where we belong. See, if you want to deploy a substantial sum of money, position size aggressively, that's when you can do uh, the integration between the two. I know one guy, Jesse Stein, uh, Google him. He did what is called as a potent combination of amalgamation of deep value and crazy momentum. And he was highly concentrated and he made a lot of money as well. But that is discretion. You cannot really mechanically do that. So we stayed away from it. So Wesley suggested that we should keep them separate. And so we're keeping them separate. Yeah, please. I think you can check out the world. Of course, of course. Of course we can. But the integration, ke liye, what I'm saying is that the, the coding required taking data from ACE equity and converting it and then running Python with the momentum, I just realize it's not worth the effort. But I'm sure it must be worth the effort for somebody who's interested should definitely go ahead. When we like to get value with you, that said. Yeah, you can do that. But like I shared, uh, my friend, you can better it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all the fair using a uh, shop, I do, but then you have to That, you know, in the thing you do, the thing, Mr. Low volatility, yes. But it's not taking care of the value part. Yeah. yeah. I mean, back to, you know, the tools like to say, uh, uh, pop innovation, uh, the thing. And how is it that the momentum is such a mystery of forming all of the data? Cumulative performance of all of the data stuff. And that is also a carpet performance. They like, either first like momentum was the best factor. Right. But if there is what you're saying is if there is factor rotation. Right. Then if you like the first three factors, the volatility will drop down as the performance. Absolutely. Very well said. So it's not that your return will improve, yeah. but the drawdown would come down considerably. Yeah. The return is your risk factor. Right. 
filho back do outro lado e o pinha de cá. O solo, o meu pai com bem, a tua também se mora em casa. O meu pai é de alta parte, eu acho que o pai é de que a da parte da parte como bem também. Mas the drawdown in lower uh, low volatility as well and it's much lower than what okay in the middle of the back you've got to either the top or the other middle of the back you got net what uh what the uh then in right agree agree and we'll come to that how you can mix that would you were any prefer no worry to do yet you, you would uh if you're not doing anything else and you're just uh investing in uh, uh indices only then you probably right you can also do what is called as covariance analysis and you can decide uh 20% is made 10% is made the excel sheet will give you the answer yeah and that mean what is the breaker now for the day well what past third what are the zero three months is too tight uh, uh you will end up in the recent performers only uh historically uh, the back test uh, the world over the academic world considers 12 month is the holy grail but you can also improve it by doing weighted average of 3 6 9 and 12 but just alone 3 months would be uh, cutting it too tight and uh, that you told on your system I, we don't do anything on our own uh, the system does it now let's do the mixing So this is the performance of uh, two of our uh, factors: mystic plus value and mystic plus momentum. Uh, just go through the data uh, quickly. Just pay attention to the return and the drawdown part. That is the main fact, uh, main thing to look at. Now, when we did the mixing, so if you notice, uh, mystic plus value fell as much as the uh, as as the market. uh it's only market link so 34 bogera uh basic well momentum fell a little less because of the cash call or whatever uh but the returns are different as well uh that had a 27% cagr this one had a 22% cagr now ray dalio's point is spot on guys i did this mixing and uh this cocktail so how many of you have had lit right Uh, I'm a big fan of LIT. ऐसा लगता है शरबत पी रहे और नशा भी हो जाता है, right? It's like amazing best of both worlds. Uh, and that is what the Ray Dalio's uh, strategy is for us. Just just have a look. The drawdown comes to 20 percent, 21, and CAGR is not uh, lost too much. It's right in between the two. And for me, this is a holy grail, ladies and gentlemen. एक कमाल की चीज है. uh you are not uh, compromising on uh, the on the returns and you're reducing the drawdown and just in case you think ke kya hi farak padta hai wo 34 tha ye 20 hai ye zameen aasman ka farak hai guys because i see clients data day in and day out people throw in the towel at 34% drawdown they might still hold on if the drawdown is just 20% and so we did this like you said uh we did this momentum and quality uh ka mixing uh this is your uh, nifty 200 move of 30 and that is quality 30 look at the stand alone returns iska drawdown 23% hai actually iska drawdown ye kam isliye dikh raha hai because this is uh, remember this is done on monthly to wo weekly drawdown zyada raha hoga but wo gyration pick nahi ho rahi because this is taking data monthly Like for example, corona में crash तो बहुत बड़ा आया, लेकिन वो next month recover हो गया, तो drawdown ज़्यादा नहीं दिख रहा. So look at the uh, apple to apple comparison. Quality has delivered only 13.5 percent CAGR, whereas momentum has delivered 18 percent CAGR, but the drawdown is 23 percent here. Uh, when we mix it, have a look. The drawdown is now just 15 percent. Now this is well within the pain threshold of lot of people, and you can actually ride the entire journey. And this brings me to a very important point, guys. अभी तक हमने जितनी भी correlations uh, studies की हैं, these studies are based on market factors. They are not uncorrelated. When the market falls, quality भी टूटेगा. 
वैल्यू भी टूटेगा मोमेंटम भी टूटेगा एंड येट द एल्फा इज देयर यू कैन सी इट स्टिल बेनिफिटिंग इवन वेन द स्ट्रैटीज आर को रिलेटेड यू गेटिंग द बेनिफिट ऑफ मिक्सिंग बिकॉज दे आर फॉलोइंग एट डिफरेंट टाइम्स वट इज ये अभी नकली को रिलेशन को छोड़ के हम असली अनकोरिलेशन पे चले जाए वट इज द असली अनकोरिलेशन वट इज द ऑपोजिट ऑफ ए निफ्टी फॉल्स गोल्ड राइजेस यूएसडी आई एन आर राइजेस वेन यू प्ले दिस गेम देयर देन एल्फा इज टोटली डिफरेंट दिस इज मोमेंटम थर्टी इंडेक्स फ्रॉम अप्रिल टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन टू टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री Around 15% return with 34% drawdown. When you just add 30% gold to it, you do not sacrifice return at all. Just a few basis point uh, loss in return, and the drawdown comes down by 10%. That is huge, and this includes the Corona crash. And this is why is this happening? because gold is actually totally uncorrelated with the markets when the markets crash gold starts rallying usd iron ore starts rallying you do you have a forex or do you have a comparison with usd iron strip for gold usd iron ore can i do but i have not brought it here and the reason was you can get exposure of usd iron ore only through derivatives and so i did not want to confuse the audience with the derivative product but uh, but yes you right you can use uh, usd inr uh, to create the uncorrelation so bro many clear and the idea was can you be a bit louder so you can see it here right the 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 beauty is that the return gets uh, either it doesn't get compromised or even if it does it it's hardly minus it's like minuscule uh, compromise but the benefit that you corresponding benefit of redu reduction in drawdown is is just amazing okay uh, this is a this is an image that i uh, i i found on internet and nothing can be more apt for an asset allocation image uh, and i tell you why uh see akad okad anusar is such a potent point that see when i speak with someone what is your pain threshold how much drawdown you can take you will be surprised people randomly say things like 30% tak mujhe kuch nahi hoga ya 40% tak kuch nahi hoga they gave me quotes of uh, charlie bunger who who basically said if you cannot withstand 50% drawdown then you not cut out for equity markets ye bolna bahut aasan hota hai 30% drawdown on your one crore investment you basically have to let go of 30 lakhs you will not sleep at night so you need to figure out what your pain threshold is and once you figured out your pain threshold threshold then you do asset allocation in accordance with your okad and i'll show you what i mean you have to dial it to your sleeping limit and you should know what your sleeping limit is and remember it will always be lot lesser than what you think it's one thing to play a tiger in a on a playstation when the real tiger shows up you pee your pants and so know that uh agar aapko lagta hai 30% drawdown is what you can easily uh, handle trust me around 20% drawdown you will start getting edgy so this is Uh, this is old data. I did not update it. In fact, if I update it, it will get even better because gold has kicked in big time in 2022. Uh, we were at 38% CAGR return with a 24% drawdown, and now this 24% drawdown can well be beyond your pain threshold. So know your threshold. If your threshold is lower, you do a 80/20. When you do a 80/20, your return of course comes down. But look at the drawdown. Now it's at 16% drawdown. probably within your pain threshold but don't think that the neighbor's pain is your is neighbor's pain threshold is your pain threshold it can be different maybe even 16 is too much for you you go more conservative you go 50 50 when you go 50 50 of course your returns will come down uh, make no mistake now you just at 25 but look at the drawdown it's it's below double digits now now 
another caveat here, another point here. Other ye no percent drawdown be uh, if you're not able to handle, then uh, rene do, then tum se na ho paega. <laughs> like then stick to FD uh, because uh, if you are doing, if you're taking market exposure, ye drawdown to aega hi aega. But my point of this slide was to bring home the point that you can dial it down to your pain threshold by doing uncorrelated asset allocation. So, like you say, simulation on that app side to find out the optimal weighted your for. Define optimal. See, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so we draw a data versus. Yeah. Okay. I have shared this uh, with you, like we have a product 70-30, uh, 70 in momentum and 30 in gold. I personally feel that's a perfect line uh, for, a, for a not so conservative investor. But like I said, no two people are saying, my friend, for somebody 9% is his threshold, then he should be putting half his money in uncorrelated asset, right? Oh, like, you have to be a little louder here. So then we should go to our next which has the threshold of preserve stat dividend and client facing me. No, not the standard deviation of nine. Uh, he should have the. Yeah, 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 yeah. This data is like over here, so we will take over the other. Let's give. Uh, so I have run this from 2011 till now, but I don't want to get into the back test thing because uh, uh, that's not accurate. This is the uh, actual live data. So so live is always better than back test. What is the remap? No, we uh, at Mystic Wealth uh, do rebalancing uh, weekly on momentum. Uh, but the, the the slow product that we have, the gold orientation, that's a monthly, yeah. And how you take the exposure forward? Yeah, you will take the gold piece or whatever, yeah. Uh, yeah, what was, so, and approximately what percent of the portfolio was, uh, what percent of the lower market boss of the portfolio? Uh, I didn't get the question. How was the, what was the age would be, Bought it till, uh, in the dollar world, that's it. Let's say why you're in Ireland's version or till the time. Trading Patrick Smarty Third Man. Yeah, okay. So, uh, in a 10 year period, usually uh, 900 trades get taken in our momentum portfolio. Then I did the combo of three uh, momentum, value, and goal where the returns are around 29 and the max drawdown came at 12%. Now, uh, to sum it up, I will like you to read these blogs and books uh, to come up to speed so that you can uh, create this all by yourself and create the DIY model for asset allocation. Uh, first of all, subscribe to our podcast if you haven't done already. We have uh, done these interviews with uh, the actual practitioners. Read Gary Antonacci, Mabain Faber, Wesley Gray, Kleinow, Tom Basso. Read these blogs. Uh, they have a uh, lot of research material posted. Uh, this will hold you in good stead for sure. And that's about it from my side, guys. Thank you. I have one question. So 30% we said is somebody's threshold, right? So our principal at night is 30 but next day, the uh, like uh, buying was fast and that hunted it off at 50. Right now, 30%, even if it is off of 30%, I'm still at my, at my principal. So, what I mean is that when you are at 150, do the threshold need to be really low? Or at the same 30 Yeah, it's a very individual cone. Like, uh, I cannot really give a standard one size fit all answer. Like, I know some people, when they are in some profits, they consider that profit as risk capital and go crazy risk on that. So no two people are saying, somebody is conservative, we will again do the rebalancing. Yeah. Hi, and you are doing this our investment part to you. Uh, how do you try to get into it? Running with your momentum, my own shortlist. 
and then there was a momentum is it that you actually lever it up and create the same structure i for the other day i'm saying and other than to diversify into a rather actor happy try to leave it now of actor and to make that i haven't uh so uh how do you lever up i mean the ones that are in fno uh yeah so not many uh, of our stocks are in fno because we deal in the small cap world but yeah well, uh, there are times when there's a overlap and a lot of uh, fno stocks do come uh we don't do lever up because leverage comes is a two edged sword my friend it will give you great returns but it will roger you as well i was on very fine words find out in this oh yeah you have to be louder to work for the capitalization stops or uh, you basically the same as the last that were fantastic uh, so our uh, our system the way we have coded is agnostic of the market cap uh, but usually speaking uh, the real action happens in the mid cap and small cap yeah cash the same with the shop shopping side sorry absolutely and then combine that absolutely you can uh, i i don't know of any aif in india which does that i think samir arora does the long shot thing uh, but you can definitely yes do that maybe combine them means in the up with them the close word or yes the world's your playground you can do that and and uh, just to answer your question there is definite uh, alpha uh, in long shot We stand any miniature farming to do the wall on our app. Who got it? Let's see how we do it. Uh, they'll do it on monthly, I guess. Uh, uh, there's this one new one in town, Samco, uh, Active Fund, but uh, it's it's pretty recent, so we don't know anything about their history. And I went through their offer document. I could not figure out the methodology either. So I I presume there's a lot of discretionary element into that. Yes, so great. Uh, I think in that regard, uh, thank you so much for all the wisdom that you've shared, and on behalf of the chapter, just small, same story.